ever, wherever, we're meant to be together. I'll be there and you'll be near. And that's the deal, my dear. Hello, everybody. My name is Born Isaac Bear from Bear Science Lab. Today, we have Bird. But for real, today, we're going to be practicing some more circular motion. But before that, to warm up on some other topics, we're going to do something involving kinematics instead. So let's put this bird down for now. We'll pick it back up later. So for our starting question, I know that's one really weird looking car, but stick with me. And then it's pulling this trailer. I think this is how a trailer looks. Okay, so it's this trailer is being accelerated at three meters per second squared because the Tesla is driving with a certain force that we don't know. It has a mass M, but don't worry, that's not going to be important. And the rope it uses has a measly braking strength of only 7,000 newtons. So, if that is true, uh, so now, they start entering some rough terrain after a while. And in this rough terrain, let me just draw it as like this. Okay, that's a, that doesn't look like a car, that looked like a Tetris piece. So in this rough terrain, there is a force of fr friction that retards at with a force of minus 1,000 newtons in the negative x direction. So the Tesla applies a, a stronger force. Yes, I'm titling it F stronger. You don't have to tell anyone about that. So the Tesla applies a stronger force so that F stronger minus FF will be equal to our original F that it was pulling with. However, when this F stronger is applied, the rope breaks in two. So, if that is uh, happens, then what is the mass of this trailer? Well, these things seem completely unrelated, but we can actually figure this out. How? Well, you know how F stronger minus FF would be F? Well, think about that. If F stronger tore the rope apart, that means there must have been a magnitude of 7,000 newtons. Minus FF is a magnitude of just 1,000 newtons. It's equal to our original F must have been 6,000. And when this Tesla was pulling this trailer with a force of 6,000 newtons, this trailer was moving at 3 meters per second squared. So that means we have sigma F equals MA. Sigma F is just 6,000 for this trailer because that's the only force, force of tension, is equal to M times our acceleration is three. So our M is just 2,000 kilograms. That's simple. All right, let's move on to the next problem. But before we do, bird break. Okay, bye bird. All right, so let's move on to our next problem. So here, we're not dealing with the vertical circles anymore, like when you spin something in the vertical direction, and when it gets to the top, FG and FN, or if not FN, then FT, act as FCs. But in this case, we're doing it as a horizontal circle. So that means that it's being spun horizontally, and FG and FN don't matter. So... If that is true, how do we do this? Well, we have a, and this is being done horizontally, so let's illustrate it that way. We have a 10 kilogram block, and it is being spun in a radius of 80 centimeters strength of 200 newton. So the question is, what is the max velocity? Well, 
Mm-hmm. What's the only thing acting as our centripetal force here? Well, if we draw it vertically, even though it's not a vertical circle, then that's just Ft because Fg would go out, uh, Fn would go out of the board, and Fg would go inwards. So both of those don't count, anyways, because they cancel each other out. So Ft is the only thing we care about here. Now our Ft is going to be our Fc. We know that our Ft max is 200 newtons. So we could essentially put that there, but let's not do that just yet. So we have Ft max is equal to Fc, if we remember, is mv squared over r. And this v is v max. So now we can multiply both sides by r over m. So the this part gets canceled out. So now we get Ft max r over m is equal to v max squared. So now, taking the square root of both sides, we have the square root of Ft max r over m. So we just plug in and we get 200 times, we've got to convert our units, 80 centimeters is no bueno, we instead have to use 0.8 meters, no bueno, sorry, over 10. So that just gives us the square root of 20 times 0.8 which is the square root of 16, or 4 meters per second. You know what else is traveling at 4 meters per second? This bird. But for real now, okay, I guess bird break is over. All right. So, for number three, we're going to be dealing with some more roller coasters. Birdie, you're going to be going on a roller coaster today. Whenever. Oh, sorry, I was taking my one-second music break. All right, so let's put this bird back in our pocket. Oh, no, it's not fitting in our pocket. There you go. So let's get started with problem number three. So a 12... So we have a 1,200-kilogram roller coaster cart... It is going in a, pretend it's perfectly circular, loop with a diameter of 40 meters. And at the top, this roller coaster has a velocity of 15 meters per second. So the question is, what is Fn at this exact point? Well, let's visualize this roller coaster cart as just a block. And we know that it's weighing 1,200 kilos. And if the diameter is 40, we don't care about the diameter. Oh, God. We don't care about the diameter. We care about the radius. So the radius is half of that, or 20 meters. So now, if we want to find Fn, what is, what is our centripetal force? Well, part of it is Fg. And part of it is Fn. So Fc, or mv squared over r, as I'll write it, is equal to Fn plus mg. So now we can send this over to the other side. mv squared over r minus mg is Fn. In fact, about the m to get m times v squared minus r over g. So now we just plug our values in. We get 1,200 times 225 over 20 minus our g is just 10 because g is our uh, acceleration due to gravity. So now we can actually do this in our head using some mental math tricks. So you can actually do this. So we get 60 times 225 minus 200 or 60 times 25, which is pretty easy to do in your head. That just works out to 1,500. All right, 1,500 Newtons, but now, before taking a birdie break, like, we're going to do this problem again, but instead of the top, let's say that it returns back to the bottom, once again with a velocity of 15 meters per second. So, if it 
it returns to the bottom now, what is the Fn over here? Well, the thing is, at the bottom, Fg points straight down, but that's not towards the center of the circle. So Fn is our only centripetal force here. So that means Fn minus Fg is going to be our centripetal force. So Fn minus Mg is Mv squared over R. So Fn is Mv squared over R minus, plus Mg, or Fn is equal to M times V squared over R plus G. So that's just 1200 times 225, 20. Oh, wait, I just realized. This is literally just 11.25. I'm a dummy. 11.25 plus G, so 21.25. So, now that's a complicated way of going about it. So now, let's just actually do it this way. So, 1200 times 225 over 20 plus 200 over 20 so we get 1,200, or rather 60 times 20, times 425 over 20. And we get 60 times 425, which is 60 times 400, plus 60 times 25. We already know what 60 times 25 is. From the last problem, 60 times 400 is pretty easy to work out. Just 24 with the three zeros, and we get... 25,500. That's our answer. And now we take a bird break. Do, 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 do. Oh, so, uh, bird, goodbye. Again, with our final problem. Oh, yeah. All right. So, our final problem is we have a roller coaster company who doesn't know any physics. The, C the CEO and the architect don't even know any physics. We don't even know how they got degrees. They probably cheated their way through the online tests. So now, how do we do this? Well, the radius of this loop is 15 meters. And uh, this guy sends a roller coaster car in 10 meters per second. But do you know what happens? What happens is that it crashes and burns. Do you know why? Because at the top of the loop, the normal force was zero. So all the passengers fell out and died. Oh no. So they want that to not happen next time or they'll get sued. So uh, what should they do? What is the minimum velocity to not have uh, anyone fall out? Well, we know that Fn must be greater than zero. So let's explore what V would be if N, Fn was zero. Well, at the top of the loop, we just have Fd and Fn both acting as our centripetal force. Fg, C is Fg plus Fn. But when Fn is zero, we just have Fc is equal to Fg. And now we just do some typical maths. And we are at our answer. V is root RG. So now, in our case, we have R is equal to 15 and G is equal to 10. So we have root 150, which is equal to about 12.25 meters per second as our minimum velocity for a loop of this size so the passengers don't crash and burn. Thank you, everybody, for watching.